and things mm-hmm. or brown and things like that back in the mid 70s and 80s mm-hmm. yeah they would take that dye and you would get a band roll on or you know brute roll on or any type of roll on deodorant bottle pop the roll up the roller out you know when it's empty or you empty out the whole thing rinse it out and then you put your ink inside and you put the uh eraser filament inside you cut it to a certain length so it's going down inside to touch the bottom and it comes all the way out the top and then your best friend duct tape helps you out after that y'all if y'all are listening to this um don is dropping some knowledge on how you can use the everyday things you have around the house and utilize that as a tool yeah, well, you know, these are just the the markers that we would make back in the day when you would do what you would call bombing a train station or bombing a train car in the inside. Mm-hmm. That's why the ink was so hard to remove. If you ever do the research to go back to those days when they talk about how they would try to buff out mm-hmm. the trains. Well, it was because they would use the shoe dyes. Okay. The liquid shoe dyes. And, it would, you know, you would pour that into a band roll on bottle and get your uh, chalkboard eraser and pull a strip out of there and put it all the way to the bottom. You want to make it thick so, you know, it would suck up the whole top of the Mm roll-on. And then you would duct tape it for security, so for leaks. But it's going to leak. It would leak anyway, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you had enough of the filament in there, it wouldn't leak as much. And then you had a homemade marker. So now you can do a lot more with that idea if you wanted to make markers. You can make smaller markers, bigger markers, things Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Change the tips if you want to. It's the same thing with the spray cans. You can go to the art stores and buy uh, different spray nibs and things like this. Mm -hmm. But the whole key for whatever we're doing right now and for our our graffiti artists out there that are aspiring graffiti artists or our elders that's trying to figure out, well, why do these kids like doing this so much and all that good stuff? These mm-hmm. are the three markers that's mainly what you want to use. Mm-hmm. That's the micro one here. This is the micro one here. That's the pigma. Now, Sharpie has a brand too as well, but I like the micro, the pigma micro. And the size of it is a 0.08 meter. Okay. Okay. Then you have your regular Sharpie. Everybody knows this one. You see this one everywhere. Mm-hmm. So wherever you can get a deal on that one, you want that one in your arsenal. If you want to get the colored ones, you can get the colored ones too as well. Let me see. Then after that, we got this one here. Now they have bigger ones than this. Mm-hmm. This is the king size one. Okay. You know. So it's mainly like having a, a, a large, medium, and small point. Okay. Now, can you do it with just that particular marker? Yeah, you can do whatever it is that I just did with just one marker. Mm-hmm. But you just have to have better control. That's all. Understand the tip nib. You know what I mean? Where to place the marker and all that good stuff and how to use it. But other than that, I would use these three. Or at least if you have the standard one that everybody uses, you know what I mean? Yeah, that'd be good too. Because you still can get smaller point marks and all of that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So a marker is always good. You're always going to have one in your house for some reason. Isn't that something? You always yeah. have a Sharpie marker around. So there's always an opportunity to uh, express yourself. Yeah, especially now with everybody having their own, you know, the idea of having a small office in your home. Mm -hmm. A lot more people have more office supplies and within your office supply idea, Mm -hmm. there's markers. There's always been markers in the office supply chain, you know. Yeah. That's how I got my first markers from my mother's first job at the uh, Parking Violations Bureau Mm -hmm. at 111 Wall Street in New York, so. She worked there and then I was, you know, I would get markers like these that I just showed you guys, you know, and I would play with them at home, the red ones, brown ones. And then, you know, after that, you would get people that would bequeath you with things, you know, because they knew you was a young artist. Mm -hmm. So her managers in the office and things like this, other people that enjoyed me. If I did a a journey or two, but nonetheless, that's what's in the environment, everybody. Mm-hmm. So you you got to have at least one marker in your environment somewhere, even if it's blue. 
if it's blue, it's okay. Use it. Just use it for the lines. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, what, what I got on display right now, everybody, is one of the pieces that I've been doing thus far. And I do them pretty quick. It takes about two, two to three hours to do each one. Sometimes faster, depend upon the uh, the area and what's in it. Something like this takes a little longer. About, took me around about three hours. I'm going to say three and a half. Because you got to look at them, too. Mm-hmm. So you'll look at them and say, okay, what do I got? I may take it back to the studio like this one. I brought it back to the studio to add more tidbits off of photographs that I took. So mm-hmm. got on location. You know, I started it before I came to do our class today. So because I didn't realize we was an hour behind again. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that. A lot of times I'm poor with that, everybody. I don't really pay attention to that time zone thing a lot of times Mm -hmm. and it catches me all the time but not in a bad way in a good way Mm -hmm. so today it was in a good way I got a chance to get out early catch the sunlight early catch these shadows that I was seeing and it was really nice you know what I mean so I took a shot of it and I started it out on the location once again 18 Mm -hmm. by 24 18 by 24 uh, marker rendering no pencil everybody just straight marker so you got to be confident with what marks you're making and it's just like i've been you know suggesting so far you know nadine didn't ask about oh could i get a pencil out first i'm so glad you didn't go there nadine i didn't i actually put my pencils away there you go that's what you want to do everybody <laughs> you know you want to build the confidence that you can pick up any apparatus and start working or start drawing Mm-hmm. Whatever your idea is, even if mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense to others, it should make sense to you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, so, yeah. So you know what, Don? What's um, up? I'm sitting here looking at your piece, and mm-hmm. and I'm thinking there's so much going on, and the thing that attracted me the most was the casting of the shadows on the road. Yeah, that's what brought me to the location. Mm-hmm. Because at certain times of the day, if you if you go around your city or your county, you know what I mean? You're going to see certain things certain times of the day. The impressionist is what shows it. I believe it was Manet or Monet that was doing the time zone things where he would look at the cathedral and do several different movements. Okay, I snatched that idea of thought and, you know, it just, it just go with what, grabs me first what you know i'm looking around and, wow look at those shadows look mm-hmm. how they stretch and then that's what made me stay at this location where i was at mm-hmm. and then uh the shadows got you know greater and greater as the sun approached you know what i mean the area mm-hmm. so depending upon where you at and where the sun is coming from you can get dramatic shadows that it'd be a nice scene to see and especially with these underpasses that i'm doing the shadow is a major part of it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the textiles and stuff, but it's the time of the day and the stretching. Now, what those what those shadows may mean to people, it may be various. I don't know. I know to me, the attractive was the way how you said the natural thing. It's wow, look right. at those how they stretch out from the bars, and it's making this intricate design on the ground, but it's all shadow. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, let me, I'm going to do all this other stuff, but I really just want to do the shadow on the ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you <know? laughs> You're getting caught up in it. Right. Well, as an abstraction, I can take that idea now and pull it out of this context and put it in another if I mm-hmm. wanted to and chose to, mm-hmm. which I do with a lot of backgrounds when I do abstract paintings. I'm, you know, you're taking things from nature. You're taking things that you have a good experience with and you're putting them in different contexts. Okay. And then you're looking at your intent. So, all right, my intent here was to make you get into the shadow. So you picked it up right from the gate. Absolutely. That was my intent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now, if I wanted to, I can take the intricacy of the shadow, the the, 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 the angular movement and the work of it. Mm-hmm. And then look at how it was a cool color in the shadow and it was a warm shadow, I mean, a warm light. Mm -hmm. So that means that I can take that idea and then take any warm, cool combination and it it may work. Mm -hmm. 
You, you, you see what I'm saying? By yeah. following nature. Right. You know what I mean? Because nature said, okay, man-made item, sunlight comes through, we're going to cast a cool shadow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let the warm night, the warm light come through. So, you know, the city street, look, everybody, concrete, black top and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what tones you would see of the different creamy blacks that you would see because of the yellowish of the sunlight. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, what if you made that an orange and then you made the shadows an absolute blue? Mm-hmm. You know, then you're going to have a reaction based upon the opposites and then taking the warm, cool idea that you found in nature. Mm -hmm. This is what a lot of abstract artists do, whether people know it or not, how you borrow from nature and how you borrow from the surroundings. So, yeah, to do a marker drawing sets you up to see and, and, and imagine other things. You know, I'm thinking about the next drawing and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, would I go more with the antennas in the background? If you look in the upper... Uh, right hand corner those are the power lines mm -hmm. in and around where the um the um uh, high speed line goes right so it goes that at, at this juncture where we at i believe this is going towards um is this no this is still yeah this is still kensington mm -hmm. avenue going underneath the underpass for the path train in the uh um you know, the, the the train that goes from state to state. And then the uh, MFL is over top of that. The local train is over top of that. So that's the market Frankfurt line. But then, you know, I'm trying to think of what I do next. Will I go abstract with the idea or uh, I'm going to keep this going because it's fun. And it's a challenge, you know. How long will it take me to do each one? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get them down underneath in an hour. Okay. In the marker, you know, so it's a lot of fast movements, a lot of fast, uh, uh, how would you say, uh, decisions you have to make. Mm -hmm. And it builds each one to build your confidence a little bit more, everybody, when you do, then you won't even worry about a pencil anymore. Mm -hmm. Not unless you're doing a watercolor or you're trying to really figure something out. Then, yeah, you may pull out your pencil to work a little bit further, you know, or... You may be in the color pencils, everybody. That may be your thing. Graphite, you know, charcoal. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know, to build confidence to get to your pen, like your ballpoint pen, your regular ballpoint pen. That's where it starts. And then it spreads off into your markers. Mm -hmm. you know, do, you know. Yeah, we did a couple series um, using a ballpoint pen. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, is it me or, I mean, I, I get a sense that, okay, so we're dealing with the marker. Well, your approach here and um, just as much as the mark is important, it's the spaces between the marks. Yeah, that's what, to, that's why a lot of people talk about negative and positive space. Mm -hmm. So wherever a mark is occupying that's positive space they're saying, you know, mm -hmm. something is occupying that space. Mm -hmm. And a negative space would be where there's nothing there or it's just air. Mm -hmm. Well, I used to argue that with professors because to me, all of it is is positive space because it's it's all active, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So how could it be negative? It's, it's just that negative is just meaning empty at that point. Mm -hmm. But it's really not empty if you really look. So it's like, say, for instance, if I was to pull up a picture of what this space was when I take a couple of photos before I get started on pieces. Mm -hmm. And then you would zoom in and you can look in and pieces and look in different quadrants of the piece. You would see that in every space in between things, there's something there. Mm -hmm. Whether it be a cloud, whether it be some mist. It's all about if you can see those edges to be able to utilize them in your piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it's the directional movement of these different items and surfaces and stuff. Because mm -hmm. you're really translating light and surface. Mm -hmm. You see? And the more you connect with that idea, the more things or the more things are going to be put into your arsenal of mark making. Because you're going to make up a mark. Yeah, the general marks everybody uses, the, the horizontal, the vertical, and the diagonal from either direction. But there's mm -hmm. different movements. If you're looking at this piece, you can see I'm using different movements. Yeah, I got those general movements in there. 
but there are other diagonal movements outside of a true diagonal, if you want to say it that way. Mm-hmm. It seems as if it's going diagonally, but it's going off. It's moving with the, what the surface was telling me at the time. Mm-hmm. So then if you look at surfaces, the surfaces are going to tell you the di- direction of the light. Mm-hmm. Which becomes interesting and what can be used to as well. Mm. Yeah, all of that can be used if you think about how you want to use them or how you attracted to them. Mm. You know, you may go there and you may get attracted by the shadows differently. So you may not have all the structure up top. You mm. may just go from the LO, the numbering on the bridge, mm-hmm. and probably go halfway and then down. Because when somebody was passing, it was like, well, why don't you just do from halfway of that down. I said, that wasn't my intent. That would be your intent. Mm. And that's what he said. he said. He said, I never thought about it like that. I said, yeah, man, I may do that for another one since you made mention. Because mm-hmm. think about it, I'm out there early morning. How many people was out there early morning on a Sunday morning? I know it was cold. It was a little- Yeah, but it's a nice cold though. It's not a, like a, a cold, like, oh my God, what the heck am I doing out here? Let me get let me go swim and get inside. Am, am I stupid? It wasn't that type of cold. It was like a nice fall mm-hmm. chill. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it was a nice chill. It wasn't it wasn't so much bad where you say, I wear my long jump. Mm-hmm. You were like, oh, man, if I had a cup of coffee right now while I was watching this, this would be a perfect commercial moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That that type of chill in the air, that's what it felt like. And you uh-huh. want to hear some type of music or something in the background and you could see the camera panning, you know, that type of commercial. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? the fine coffee, you know, it, you know, something, it, it just felt like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then the shadows and everything else. But it's your intent. My intent was to get the shadows. But then in my thought process, it's like, well, how can I show you the shadows without showing you the structure in at least one? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So this is the one where I had to, sh- I have to show the structure. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's more complicated ones I want to tackle too, like the, the new stuff that they did around um, Columbus Boulevard and Aramingo. Okay. The way they did the underpasses over there, they have they have a definite bike lane and it's got rocks and different textures going. Mm-hmm. And you can see through to the street and you see 95 and the way the ramps are running. So it's pretty interesting. So I'm going over there and probably either take shots or, you know, I may do some sketching there. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I do the sketching on location. Sometimes it's like, eh, I don't feel it. Let me just take the shots and get that body. Mm-hmm. And then I don't question why I'm feeling that way. It's just whatever I feel when I get there. If I get there and it doesn't feel like I need to be drawing there, mm-hmm. then I, I keep it. I just take the camera out or my phone out or I bring the little, um, I got a, a, a Canon uh, power shot mm-hmm. that I take out with me. Because I don't like to take the Nikons and all this stuff. It, it brings too much, you know, glitz and glamour and stuff. And people are looking for the wrong reasons. Yep. So you want to think about that too, everybody. So if you got a good phone that mm-hmm. has a good battery, I'm still holding on to an older phone. That's why I didn't just say, take it with your phone exclusively. Mm-hmm. I take the slim shot, the, the power shot out with me. Better battery and I can take more shots. And I got a... Um, a card inside of it that uh, I can take as many shots as I need to. Okay, gotcha. And, and then you can blow them up and then work from them there. You can even take those photographs that you got if you do take photographs like how I do. Mm-hmm. And then you can zoom in on certain areas and then make a painting out of a zoomed in, cropped out area of the photograph. Mm-hmm. Same thought process that you use when you're out looking on location. Maybe one day I'll do a video like that when I get the better device, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll go out and do a video on how, you know, you look around a space to be able to snatch out imagery that may be attractive to people to see. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people are hitting me up from uh, other states that used to live in this area. Mm -hmm. And they love it. They're like, oh, I remember Philly like that. I remember. Mm -hmm. That's Market Frank for Nine, man. I said, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't tell me what section. I don't need to know what section. I'll never forget that book. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? 
Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're getting comments and stuff like that. And ultimately, that's what you really require or need to be able to push forward on with the idea. Or you're like how I am. I, I'm just stubborn. I'll just keep going until I figure out my next move with it. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is to get a lot of work done. That's the whole thing, everybody. Get the work done. Get the explore. Work done. Experience, explore, explore, explore. You know, look at the textures. What mark can you make up for the different textures that you're seeing? Mm -hmm. Or the different surfaces that you're translating into texture on your surface because we're using a marker. So each mark placement is important. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Each mark, wherever you lay that marker down, it's important. Each mark, each uh, wiggly mark. Mm -hmm. and, and you're going to make up your own marks you know look at the marks I made up to make you believe the trees that grow wild on the right side and then some of the if you look closely if I was to get up close on it you can see some of the um, shrubbery that grows in between the cracks of the cement and things like mm -hmm. that you see along the other side of it and, yeah, and all the way down and then you can see some areas where you say, well, hey, Don, I don't think that's there. But you don't know if you don't go down there. That's what I tell people, too. Mm -hmm. So if nobody can say you're really wrong. They can just say it doesn't look like that. All right, fine. But, you know, I haven't had anybody do that live yet, just yet. You know, some of the mm -hmm. street walkers that'll be out early morning, mm -hmm. they made comments. Oh, I seen you over there on KNA. Mm -hmm. you, the, you the big guy everybody was talking about that was doing drawings. Yeah, that's me. Thanks for recognizing me. You know? mm -hmm. Have a good morning. So, yeah. You know. Do them enough, people start to recognize you. Philadelphia is not that big, everybody. Mm -hmm. Even though we wanted to be a metropolis like a New York or something like that, it's really not. It's, it's in between a zone of that. And that's what I try to show, too. Like, it has the city elements, you know what I mean? I'm showing those elements. Then we have to go out and show the other ideas on how uh, Philadelphia is seen as the, you know, the perfect combination of land and man, you know, mm -hmm. going out to the parks and the different sections of the city that have the rocks and the trees and everything else and all of that, and all that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I just want to, you know, water is powerful. So I just wanted to be up and around the water. And then electrical lines are very powerful things mm -hmm. to be around. Mm -hmm. So if you look back in the history from the late 18, like 1850 forward, a lot of artists, you know, <laughs> dealt with those ideas mm -hmm. of the infrastructure and how you can use it as an abstraction, the beauty of light. The uh the the invention of marks of marks because you got to have a mark for everything that you see. Think about that. Everything that you're able to see, you have to decide a mark or a squiggly line mm -hmm. or something that represents that. So when somebody looks, they can go, "Hey, is that a train? Is that an overpass?" Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then if they're able to say that, you know, I've had people say, yo, that looks like, you know, because I, you know, I'm from, you know, New York originally. So I have a lot of people that say, oh, that looks like so and so in Brooklyn. I said, no, that's not Brooklyn. That's, that's Philly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you get to see, you know, I have people from Newark. They'll say, oh, man, that looked like something up here, Elizabeth. Any one of your city environments, even from Chicago. I had one person from San Francisco that commented on me and said, they look, they look, you know, close to being in San Francisco, but they're not. Yeah, a different whole idea when it got to the West. Mm -hmm. That whole building of, you know, trains and infrastructures and carts and all that good stuff. So more San Fran. I had somebody look at the um the other one I did of the uh pier. Mm -hmm. And they said that one felt more like San Fran. Because okay. of the cobblestone idea that I put there, the way the stone was there. The very thing that you liked in that piece. I like the way that, you know, the path, the paving was done, mm -hmm. the rocks and everything on that one. So, yeah. And then the same thing could be done with any item, you know. So, the item that we was going to mess with today was going to be food, cheese steaks, and stuff like that. 
food. Yeah, get no, you hungry. Any, yeah, I don't have any pictures of one now. So I was just going to, you know, say let's go off of memory, and everybody just goes off of memory. But then we may have too many different points of views of um, on what to do. So maybe I'll do. I'll start off with a basic shape, and then everybody can make their steak into what it is. Maybe a fish stick. Maybe an eggplant. You know what I mean? But the main mm -hmm. thing is to get into the textures. What do those things look like? Now, I know Nadine. Nadine may go and find a picture for us real quick. She may do that. Or she may bite on the idea of it going totally from memory. A lot of times when we go totally from memory, it makes it a little bit more fun. Yeah. And it may and it may make your 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 salivation glands kick in too. Yeah. So be aware, everybody. You may even start smelling stuff. You know what I mean? Because you're going to be thinking so intensely and you may slip into that zone while we're doing the drawing. You may, because I know I do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and if you know my rhythm now, if you listen to any one of the videos that we've done, how many times do I mention food in each one, Nadine? Always, know. always, yeah, always. I don't, I, I'm not going to say I don't know why. I'm just going to let the secret out. And the secret <laughs> is, is that one, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a foodie. Yes, that's what they call it now. That's what they used to call a greedy person. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the other thing is I just see the similarities in art and food mm -hmm. when you're in the kitchen. Like mm -hmm. the terms that you may do mixing and 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 put a little bit of this and put less of that or look mm -hmm. at this or that's not ready yet because the fat's not ready. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the consistency of paint is one of those things that when you're talking about those type of things where it comes in. You know what I mean? Oh boy, somebody was trying to call me and mm -hmm. they don't realize this this is not the time to call me. Mm -hmm. And then it should come back up though. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, everybody. But just know if that picture comes up, I'm on the phone, Nadine, and then people are trying to call okay. while I'm on. But I tell everybody while I'm doing these classes or doing my videos that you know well i can blame it on the the, the website not being up so I, I have to take it on the chin mm. maybe somebody said well your website's not up i'm leaving the room open for somebody to say something slick like that so uh can't take it back it's in video land but hey we're here. <laughs> you know yeah. i'll still stand by it so yeah they did what you want to do you want me to just start in and just start a shape for a cheesesteak or something yeah, absolutely. And then people can turn it into whatever they want to. And we'll talk about the different shapes and how to fuse them in and mm -hmm. how to get the marks together. Okay. Well, I'm going to take this headphone. Well, no. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm a, No, I don't have to take the headphones off. Let's see you. All right. Let's move the slide over. All right. You should see me walking in front now. Yeah. What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? Uh, so let's see here. Yeah, I got another piece of paper underneath there. Now, this paper here is not the watercolor paper. It's the 18 by 24 uh, media paper, as they call it, or multi-purpose paper, mm. which is a drawing paper nonetheless. That's all it is. I just said all those names that you fancy, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but now nah, in art, a lot of times, the names of different things. You see that, everybody? Yeah. Mm. I'm going to put this on the table over there. You know, another good idea if you have studio space or wide open space, everybody, you got okay floors, I would suggest putting all your tables and things on wheels as much as you can or on stilts, you know what I mean? Or if you know you don't have to have, you don't have to worry about flooding, then you're good to go. All right. How's that look, Nadine? We good? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. All right, that's well. Before we do it like this, everybody, this is how you would get your own thoughts together, too. You start thinking about the item and what direction you want to go. With. Maybe look at your paper. And what I do is instead of drawing the lines, and I can see where center is now, or guesstimated center is. And I start thinking about what I want to put in there in my mind's eye. Mm hmm. Mm. That's me eating some peaches, everybody. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, hence, food. Yep. Mm -hmm. The conversation continues. There it is. 
All right, so I got my marker out, everybody. And I'm looking in here, looking in here. And if we say cheesesteak, I'm thinking three-dimensional. I'm thinking from long to big out here. So what I would do is I know center is somewhere in here. I divide things into quarters, everybody. So whether you want to say this is one, two, or one, two, three, four, however you want to say it, the, uh, this left-hand quadrant right here above half, I would start right in there by making a scanty little round mark, like so, almost looking like a butt. Mm -hmm. See that? Think about how the roll looks. It's nice and round if you get a nice cheesesteak or or a uh, uh, melted uh, uh, hoagie or something or a melted sandwich for other people in other states. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if y'all call them subways or hoagies down there, subs or hoagies, but I know if you're in Philly, they call it a hoagie. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then if it's a warm sandwich like the one we're talking about, it's a cheese thing. It's a cheese thing. Yep. So then what I start thinking about is how that roll may fold over on the back side, the furthest point away from you. And then I start thinking about how I don't see this bottom side on this side. So I may not put a mark down there, you see? Mm -hmm. Start to dip it down just a little bit in there. You see? So then now I can do a hypothetical line that'll come down here that'll say, this is where the opening of the sandwich would be here and then over here. All right, so I may even make it wider. You see, so where that sandwich just spills right out into your lap. So then in other words, now I'll make a line that's the inside of the sandwich of the bread here, you see. On this side, I'm going to pick it right at the hump where I'm going to do that because I want the bread to feel like it's turning around, you see. Mm -hmm. So then now I'll make the bread seem like it's rolling this way. A couple of light lines. Notice how I'm using these light sketchy lines for placement of things. You see, that's the whole key to using your marker or your pen. You don't want to make a mark too deep, you know, because that means that if you make it too, you know, too continuous, you're saying you got to commit to whatever angle that is. So me, I try to show you how to leave it open just a little bit by using these little sketchy dash lines. It makes it easier. If you look at some of the pieces that I've done, everybody, you may see it inside underneath if you get close up on a piece like, oh, there's some dash lines underneath. Yeah, that's what I use to get everything to going. Sometimes I mesh them in real good. Sometimes you can see them underneath of stuff. All right. So then look, how does the cheese state look even more? Well, this side around a little bit. So I want to get the bread together first. And that cavern for where the bread would be. Oh, my God. There we go already. I got my thought in, everybody. How about you, Nadine? I'm working it out. Working it out. Just make sure that it's like you try to make it smaller when you go to the top of the page. Mm -hmm. So you can have that feeling of it falling out personally to you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times with my pieces, I try to make it personal to me. Because now when I know when you look, you're going to make it personal to you. You're going to be like, God. Oh man, I gotta get me a sandwich. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had to make <laughs> you know? a stop. Yeah. Now look, you can make this is where you can make it an eggplant parmesan. Right now, I'm at the point where I can make this an open face if everybody understands the terminology of the diner food and, and different restaurant food. Open face is pretty much your your bun is opened up and it's toasted on the inside and the outside. Mm -hmm. So that's your open face. When you say you want an open face sandwich, that's what they're saying. That's what they're going to give you back. Toasted both sides open for you to be able to close it yourself. Open face sandwich. Ooh, okay, Nadine. Which way are you going, Nadine? You going, you know, cheesesteak? I was thinking about going chicken cheesesteak on mine. Cheesesteak. All right, so it's pretty much the same mark then, the same movement. We just have to say where we want it. So with the cheesesteak, I would say it's more so like a, almost like a wafer movement. And with the chicken cheesesteak, it's almost like a, a big old chunk, a ball, mm -hmm. if you look at the different textures. So I'm going for the cheesesteak, so I'm going to do these half round balls in here. 
You see? And it's going to start to look like meat filling in. Now, I don't want to put it in very, you know, thick at this point. Still in that light, sketchy movement. You see, because there's other things that we might want in there, like I might want mushrooms, so then now I would put mushroom shapes in there. See that, Nadine? Mm -hmm. So now I'm starting to devise different type of shapes. What about onions? So I'll put some onions in mine. See, this is not the Geno's one or Pat's. This is the one that you'll see if you go more inland. You know what I mean? A real chopped steak like this sandwich will help, help you for two days. I go to a place in South Jersey called Catano's. Mm. They have one in Philly and they have one in uh, Camden, right over the bridge on Route 130. Right off of Route 130, rather. Yeah. You almost get it's like this, it's like the place over on oh, what is that again? Lehigh and uh Kensington mm. or Lehigh in front. It's a it's a, you get a pound cheesesteak over there, a pound worth of meat on one sandwich, everybody. Wow. Yeah, serious business. That's a that's a two-day, three-day sandwich, depending upon the person buying it. Me, it was two days, two days. And it's good. So you see how I just, you know, randomly just start putting my mushroom shapes in there. You know, it doesn't have to just be the meat. I'm going to put my mushroom shapes in there. You know, another one that I, I normally get is one called a jersey. And it has potatoes, mushrooms, onions, bell peppers, hot peppers in it. So think about it. Make up a shape for your bell pepper. Make up a shape for your uh, hot pepper that you may want in your sandwich. Put it around. You see how I'm doing? You see this cavern I got in here for the cheese to spill out and everything? Mm -hmm. You want the cheese in there. But see, the cheese you can add on on top, over top of where your meat marks are. Because you don't want to make the meat too, too much in a finished state right now. Like, if you see the way I got the sandwich going, mm -hmm. I got it open to start doing effects, you know what I mean? Like dimensional effects where I can make the bread seem like it's rolling more now and it's rolling under, you see, with just those marks. Think about the bread. See that, Nadine? Mm -hmm. Now, look, I can say that this is the front of the bread right here. See that? Yeah, And then now I can make the texture of the bread in there. You see the little kernels for the bread. You know, maybe even at the edge there to bring it in some more. See how I'm using that wiggly line? Mm -hmm. That's mimicking. It's suggesting. It's mimicking the edge of a toasted sandwich bun. What does that look like to you, everybody? I know what it looks like to my greedy behind. What does it look like to your greedy behinds, everybody? Especially that sandwich that you like. I would say to everybody, if you like the position on how we put that sandwich in there, the, the idea of the bun, you can make the sandwich anything you want to make it. Just remember, you have to make up a mark that's going to resemble whatever fixing is in your sandwich. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when you're dealing like this with the marker, you're thinking ahead before you put it down. That means that if you put it down as a solid line, you're saying it, it's going to stay there and not too much is going to be able to go over top of it. You see? So that's why I do things like this to say where a meat is going to be possibly. Mm. Dotted and dashed lines like that. You see? Here, this is where the bun is here. So now I can start formulating the bun here on the outside edge and how it turns in. You know, I can make the bun a little bit more finite or finished. Why? Because I got the position. I'm not going to change the position of the bun, make it longer, make it go over here, or left, right. No, so now I can put more of a darker line to describe that edge to me a little bit more. And then uh, if you're the type of person that hasn't really looked at your food, you may have a problem with doing this, or this may help you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But think about how the edge of that crispy, crunchy, 
toasted bun is? You know, do you have an Italian bun? You know, or are you at like subways where you got the different types of buns you can get, you know, wheat and all that good stuff. Me, myself, I'm going with the standard, you know what I mean? Italian bun out here. Going to make it look like it was toasted on the inside too, right along that edge there. So I'm going to put it like a little crispy dash line here. That's going to come right to the front of where the sandwich is here. I'll, I'll make that more defined later on, but I know where my sandwich is now, you see? Oh, yeah. Isn't that the position like when you're about to just close it up and take a bite, right, Nadine? Oh, yeah. Ooh, come on, Nadine. Talk about it. I'm going to talk about that when I start putting, I'm putting some sesame seeds on mine, man. I don't know about y'all, man. I'm no, I ain't too. doing that. You ain't doing <laughs> sesame seeds? Oh, no. Man. Why not, Nadine? All right, what you said you're making a cheesesteak, right? Mm hmm So what type of fixings is on your sandwich, Nadine? I'm plain Jane. I just want the, the meat and the cheese. Dang, no ketchup, no sauce. Um no I butter put, bun, no garlic bun, nothing like that. No garlic bun. No mozzarella cheese. What? No different Mo cheese mozzarella, cheese? yeah, mozzarella cheese. All right. Okay. Yours is straight up basic. You don't even ask to put yours back in the oven. No. Oh, man, Nadine, you got to step it up, man. You got to <laughs> step it up, man. I they just put that, put that, they put that other, you know, amount of mozzarella on top. Well, mozzarella. Let me stop saying mozzarella. Well, mozzarella on top. And they put it back. Yeah, put it back in the oven, boy. Drizzle some more of that olive oil on it. Oh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, man, you can tell I'm a foodie, you guys. Come on. I, I know I'm not the only one. Come on, Nadine. Come on. I know. <laughs> you know, lunchtime, you out there like, ah, oh, what am I going to have today? You know, this is Philadelphia. You know, I can have falafel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or depending upon where I'm at, location I'm at today, I can have... A cheesesteak, a cheesesteak. Yeah. That used to be my problem when I worked at Coca-Cola, man. As soon as I would get off on work, I would go to certain places because I worked oh. the seven and seven to three shift. Mm -hmm. So it would be certain diners that you would get off at three, four in the morning you go to. Mm -hmm. And I would go to that one. one. One of the ones was on Spring Garden. And then the other one was that pound of uh, the, the pound cheesesteak spot I was telling you about that was on Lehigh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they used to be open uh, late night like that, early mornings. Okay. Yeah, I used to go over there. And I used to go right in my, my right in my Coca-Cola uniform. Three, four in the morning, get me a pound cheesesteak. That's when I used to eat beef. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Learn to make my mouth water. Yeah, ma'am. I know my bun over here is starting to make me feel like it. <laughs> yeah, my bun is starting to look kind of crunchy. Yeah, I like that. Yep, it has to be crunchy. Well, let me get out the way of the light so everybody can see it. Looks pretty good on the screen. All right. So now you see how you start something off with your marker or with your pen, everybody. You want to leave it as open as possible. You want to look at items first before you drop your first mark. You know, mm -hmm. even if it's in your mind's eye, like how we did today, everybody borrowed the same you know, design idea of the placement of the hoagie or the bread itself. Now, if you want to, you know, fill it full of cheesesteak, what does the cheese steak look like? Mm -hmm. You know? Let's see. Maybe I'll flip this back. And I'll sacrifice a piece of paper so we can talk about that. Because I got other things on the marker board. And so rather than go through all of that with the marker board, we'll pull our drawing back so that we can talk about certain shapes. Like your mushroom. See, the mushroom can be like 
You have that round on the inside here, and you have a round on the inside here, and then it comes out. You see? Mm -hmm. Or it can be the button one. This would be like the portabella, the baby portabella one. The button one would be more so. Almost looks like an ace of spades. Mm. That's how the button would look. And then you would have a dark area that's around here somewhere in there. You see? What about the, it? Almost looks like a dog's nose, you know, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Too funny, but it's the mushroom, though, a mushroom shape. And a lot of time, if they don't take the stem totally all the way out, that's what you'll get the stem there like that. Mm hmm. Onions, another one, you know, you can do them the long way. The onion strip. Or you can do the diced one, the small little triangles or rectangles. You know, your bell pepper is going to be that too. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. What else? All right, the meat. The, the steak a lot of times is, you know, chuck steak or cube steak. And then the shapes will look something like this. And then from it being chopped, it has this, you know, rigid edge sometimes from the meat tin. Mm -hmm. Then it'll have fibers in it like so. So in other words, if you wanted to make the cheese steak and it's kind of smaller area, then you would use some oblong or half round rectangular shapes. And you would accumulate them on top of one another. See how I'm doing there, Dane? Mm -hmm. So you would have to make up a shape that you're cool with, with making it look like a piece of meat. And then when you accumulate them, so I'm basically using a mark like this. You see how I made that piece there? Then the next piece I would make, I made a piece that went this way, the opposite way. Then I made a piece that's in the middle like so. Mm. But I'm trying to mimic. I don't want them to look like Doritos. You know what I mean? I want them to look like chopped meat, chopped pieces of meat. And then now you can start filling in what we was talking about a few minutes ago, the negative spaces, mm -hmm. the spaces in between things where nothing is occupying, you see? And then once you start putting them together, where there is a, 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 a line that's more clearly defined or a sketchy line, when you accumulate a lot of them together, it's going to take on a resemblance of what it is you needed to take it up, the, the resemblance up, mm -hmm. you see? So then now, if I wanted to do it with the with the onions in there, now I would make some of the onions possibly overlap and make those lines a little bit darker or a little bit more, you know. See how I'm using that onion filling? Mm-hmm. And it's starting to feel like that overlap. That's what you're trying to give us, that accumulation, that gradual accumulation of the mark that you're making up. Uh, if you're doing a Parmesan sandwich and you wanted to do a, a Parmesan, an eggplant Parmesan, I would do it like this and then show the edge on that thing. Mm -hmm. And then just show the crunchiness on it I mean, with a dashed line, you see? Same thing I would do for if it's a fried fish sandwich. You know, if it's a fried fish sandwich, then I'm just changing the shape. A lot of times it's flounder that's in there. So the flounder would be pretty much like this when you get it fried up. What you think, Nadine? You ever had fried fish? Oh, yes. Yeah, that shape right there is common to everybody right there. You see that? Mm -hmm. And then now you would use these half round C marks to make it seem like it's thicker than what it is, than what you just did. You see in between areas. And you see how when I do that movement, look at how it really looks like a nice piece of Nathan's battered fish. Mm. Yeah, so when you want a, a fish hogan, you want that fish to be nice and crunchy, where at least oh, I do. Oh, man. 
Yeah, I don't want no soggy fish sandwich, man. Mm -mm. Now, unless it's chopped fish. Now, you can get that, too, as well. They do a chopped fish like it's almost like a stir fry. Oh, really? Yeah, and then they put, you know, you can put your hot peppers and stuff with it. And they use cod fish, you know, fish that holds together pretty good. Mm -hmm. So they'll use cod, they'll use flounder. Flounder is pretty good, and they use catfish, too. You see the marks that you have to make up to make us believe the various surfaces, everybody. Mm -hmm. Mark invention, shape invention. You know, you got to put different combinations of shapes together to make the shape that you want to see. Accumulation is everything. So a lot of times, say, for instance, I wanted to make it look like I had two pieces of flounder there, but I only started off with one. Then I would just come right off the bottom here and just make the shape come off and just switch it like it's going to uh, like nine o'clock position. And I will put another shape right underneath of it. And then now I would do the same crunchy feel with the batter right underneath of that. And then what starts to happen is I'll do the darker movements to the one that's put next to it or the one that I'm making look like it's underneath. See that, Nadine? Mm -hmm. And all I'm using is a is a dash line to show how it's crunchy. Because if you look at a piece of fried fish or fried vegetable, you can almost see how the crunchies look like dash lines, the tops of the crunchy parts, you know what I mean? And you see that? See how this one looks like it's underneath of this one? Mm hmm All right. And you see? Cheese is another one. You know, you can put the cheese, like if I had the eggplant here, I would put the cheese underneath. And how the cheese look when it's on a bun, you know what I mean? I liken it to almost looking like a, a frozen wave. You see? The thing that I do, the whole clock and turn it off. So now I come back to this. And now I let Nadine do what she's going to do. I got to give me some coffee. Yeah. I'll be right back. I'm going to take the headphones off now, Nadine. Okay, cool. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Let me switch this up for a second. Yeah, I, I can hear a little bit, everybody, but I, I won't be able to hear intricate stuff. You okay. guys can hear me because I got the nano mic on. Mm -hmm. So it's it's it picks up everything in the atmosphere. If I drop something, you can hear it real good. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. that that blue Vada mic. Okay. Yeah, but I got it on a mode where it picks up. You know what I mean? Uh, the the sound in the whole area is not directed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can be like how I am now on the other side of the studio. And be talking and you still hear me pretty darn gone clear. I definitely can hear you pretty yeah, darn gone the, clear. Yeah, if I had the Wi-Fi headphones on, I probably could hear you a little bit better. I only mm -hmm. get in it because I put the headphones up high. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I, I put I place them up high on something so now I can hear the sound above everything else. Nothing blocks it. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody, I want to say, you know, we we've been almost an hour. And we uh, started talking about um, uh, just Mark Invention and uh, the piece that Don uh, was working on um, under the, um, what we call the, I think is, yeah, the Market L. And um, there were some really interesting uh, points uh, it, that we started to talk about. And this is all about um, replicating what you see with a marker, Sharpie marker, no eraser, everybody. This is, this is really fun stuff, challenging stuff, exciting stuff, um, that we've been just diving into. And so we just want to take this time to say, 
Hi, and um, if you're watching this in a rebroadcast, it is just as important to leave comments in the comment section below. So make sure you do that. If you're watching us live, say hi and um, tell us what do you think about what we're doing here? Um, are you hungry? Because I'm definitely hungry <laughs> working on this hoagie, or so I said cheese steak. I was thinking maybe I'd get a hoagie later, but I don't know this cheese steak. My cheese steak is making, is making my mouth water. Um, there was one thing that resonated from our conversation earlier that just got me thinking. And that was everything that you see, you have to make a mark as an artist. And that mark uh, then translates into something that's perceived a certain way by mm -hmm. the viewer. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was just amazing. And now today, what we're doing, something else that actually Don said before we started uh, going live was that every drawing, every painting, is a problem that you solve. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm solving a problem right now with this drawing, with a Sharpie marker, mm -hmm. with you out there, art fam, and wherever you're catching this, whether mm -hmm. it's on Twitter, with, uh, whether it's on Twitch, Facebook, in the Facebook group, on YouTube, um, we are drawing together and experiencing, we're having an experience, you know, and we're, we're, we're taking what we've observed in our mind's eye. Yeah, we're about doing group thought. Group thought. Who the thought? This is, yep. Group. It's everywhere. Like, it's, think about this, to take you backwards into the idea of what you appreciated about the idea of mark making. Mm -hmm. What is the alphabet? Just think about that. And then when you put a series of, of letters together, what does that do when you look at them? Mm. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So like you put a couple of angles together, you put a triangle with a line through it, you will all say A. Mm hmm and that's just from the placement of the of of the marks mm -hmm. of angles. Well, it's the same thing when you're drawing. If I do a mark a certain way, I got you. You're gonna think mushroom. Mm -hmm. Hands down. If I if I put that mark there, I can I can I've done it even in places where I didn't know the language of the people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I've taught in Chinatown. A lot of people didn't have a good grasp on English, but symbology, everybody has a, a grasp on. Mm -hmm. So if you can make a symbol of something, the person's going to look at you and say, oh, and then, then they're going to say what that means to them. Mm -hmm. Then now you know. I do it in the Spanish class for the Man Center all the time when I'm teaching the art classes there. Mm -hmm. I look at somebody that really has a good grasp on it and I say, well, how do I say a little bit more, a little bit of this, a little bit that, lots of people, muy people, things like this, muy people, mm -hmm. Paco, and then, oh, okay. But it all comes from what? The symbols, the way you put marks together. They also call it the way you would put sigils together. Because mm. a sigil is a mark. The fire mark, basically. But these things, when you put them up, you got to agree. Like, think about it. When you're riding down the block and you see green, you don't just bypass it, right? Why do you stop at, I mean, why do you go on a green light and stop on a red light? Because they symbolize something. Of course, yeah. But we all socially, group, communally, mm -hmm. society, cultural-wise, agreed upon green meaning go. Mm -hmm. in a circle because mm -hmm. imagine if they change the shape of the circle would it still mean go yeah it, yeah, yeah a lot of times because the of the square, color 
But hold on now. A lot of times a square is the red one. That means stop. Mm -hmm. It isn't until we started playing these games that you can have a green square. Think about right. it now for real. We're both over 50, so we, we've grown up in an era where these games that everybody appreciate now was just starting. Mm -hmm. The button would be black. A square would represent stop or press here, black or red. Right. Didn't start being green until around about late 80s, mid 90s when they changed the controllers and all this stuff. Then they started putting the square that was the arrow that would normally be green for everything. Remember that? We used to have a little arrow and everything that would be green. Mm -hmm. And you get a, a triangle that's laid on its side. Mm -hmm. Then that's when you put two triangles on the side. That means that you can you can fast forward real fast on this device. Right. Because you got two squares on both sides. I know this sounds like mundane to everybody and some people, but if you... If you're over 50, you can enjoy this comment here, man, because that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now you have all the different colors, but then imagine if they changed the green light for the traffic to a square. Would that cause problems at first? It might. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm bringing up. The idea of what could be. Like, say, for instance, Everybody's used to walking through a rectangular doorway for their personal space. Mm -hmm. What if we made it round? Yep. Would they feel comfortable walking through it? I don't know. It would definitely be an experience. Yeah, it'd be different. I have walked through spaces like that where it was round. Same here. And it felt totally different. Yeah. It felt, for me, it felt better. Because mm. the way energy runs in a round or bubble, mm -hmm. nothing gets caught in the corners, as they mm -hmm. say. Because mm -hmm. the room was cooler when it was hot outside, then I had an opportunity to go to the same space in the wintertime, and it was warmer with less energy because of the spiral and cyclone type of idea mm -hmm. with the way energy can oscillate and all this good stuff. So. Excuse us for talking art, you guys, but you know. Sorry you're for talking. Yeah, art. you're you're probably saying, "Well, how is that going with our sandwich, man? What are you guys doing?" Well, it's all about understanding shapes. Yes. The more you understand them, the more various ways you understand how to invent a mark mark invention. At this point, looking at the edges of any item that's in your vicinity or what you place your eyes on and replicating it. Mm-hmm. So replicate, replicate. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Everything in your environment, if you was thinking about drawing it, you would have to make a mark for it. Mm -hmm. Think about package design, everybody. You know, heck, think about a uh, chef, a chef when they're um, plating food and things. Mm -hmm. That's their painting. So they take they talk about shapes the same way we talk about shapes. I heard the um, who's the chef in the Hell's Kitchen. I heard him talk about a plating a dish one time, and it sounded like he was talking about a painting. <laughs> yeah, because it's an art. That's what I try to tell people: it's presentation. So if it's presentation, you got to present. Uh oh, we got a little bit of echo. 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 Little I think it was possibly on my size. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. is it that bad? Can you hear it now? It's a little bit of an echo. Are you yeah, near the laptop? It it. Yeah, no. I know what the problem is now. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. What happened was I had the, the phone, somebody texted me or something, and it oh. took the sound off. Yeah. Oh. So now I, I muted everything and then I, I um, turned the volume down now. That's another mm -hmm. thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. 
And then I turned the volume down on that device, so we're good to go. Guess what I found? What's that? I'm sharing the screen. A door and opening. Yeah, that's, that's mainly those the Oriental spots. Yeah, yeah. Mainly the Asian, Japanese spots. I have more of that going on. Mm -hmm. From what they, I found. And a lot of times they make the step, the threshold when you're going over that you have to step over it. Like you, uh, if it's a a, a temple, uh -huh. they don't want you to step on that little divider. Right. That the faces, that's, uh, I forget what they say that, that is, but it's just like what we do when you have somebody come in your house mm -hmm. and you want them to take the shoes off. Mm -hmm. And that, it's the same type of idea. Yeah. So you step over and it's mm -hmm. high and so and then you step into another place so mm -hmm. it's it's mentally um putting you in your mindset in a place that you're entering something different yeah because so, that's the whole thing like you're entering from one dimension into another yes one paradigm into another yes yeah that's what that yeah. is okay what's happening there? Uh oh i see what happened yeah, it took me a little while to find that, but yeah, I was just like, oh, I think I have a picture of that. There we go. Man, sorry just about that. Just what you were talking about. Yes, sir. Yeah. So everybody, as we get ready to dive right back into our sandwiches. Oh, yeah, you keep going, everybody, while we're talking. I mean, yes. you still yes. keep going. You don't stop, you know. You don't stop. Don't because stop. I already went over the marks that you can make, but I don't know what your sandwich is going to look like, everybody. Yeah. I don't know what my sandwich is going to look like. Right. But I did want to say that, just a reminder, your, your website is still down. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. So um, how you can reach us. Um, I made adjustments in the description or the about us on yeah, our you, Facebook page. Yeah, Facebook it, and Instagram are the main two now. For so, me. so if you want to reach out, connect with Don, um, if you potentially like any of the things that Don has dis has uh, used uh, or showed us on his journey. And as he takes us on a journey and you're like, I got to have that one. Is it for sale? I want to buy it. You reach out to Don and he'll talk to you about how you can get that. Yeah. All right. So um, this is all a journey. It helps. It helps keep the lights on. Um, and uh, we helps to keep me it. sane. It helps to Help, keep lights yeah. on. Yeah. But it's the main thing. It keeps me sane. Yeah. Like even if I wasn't online with you guys, I would be drawing every day. I, I just right. have to do it. I don't feel right if I don't do it. Right. I've done it all my life, honestly, you guys. So if you have kids out there, you know, that are like how I am, I can help you to understand that because mm -hmm. it's just that it's the best thing because it's especially if it's the only child. If it's the only child, male or female, this mm -hmm. sort of thing, drawing is the best thing to them. Why? Because right. it's my own personal world then. Mm -hmm. So I used to always dwell in my own world back when I was doing, you know, a little younger guy, 15 and under. Before I went to high school, I would be in my room just as happy as content, mm -hmm. drawing away, making up worlds, making up universes, making up characters and universes. You name it. Drawing food, you know now, everybody, drawing food was my big thing. Some of my best drawings back in the day was of the food that I liked, spaghetti. Mm -hmm. You know, mama's spaghetti where you have the, the all right of chicken in it. You know, you know, we used to get the box chicken. Mm -hmm. It's already fried already. I ain't ashamed of it. And mama used to make that chick that that spaghetti there. That was the potluck spaghetti, I used to call it too. Because mm -hmm. you would have the sausages, the, the fried chicken in it, and you know, whatever other leftover meat you had, mm -hmm. you know, leftover pork chops, whatever the case may be, all in the sauce on the noodles. Oh man. So, yeah, don't mind me, everybody. I'm having a moment. <laughs> ah, ah, nothing wrong with having a moment. There it is. All right, let me get back in here and formulate a little bit more to show everybody this accumulation that I'm talking about before I would change markers. So then now, look, I'm looking. I'm going to move a little bit faster. 
with my mushrooms idea because I like mushrooms. So I would make them so different directions. And then now if you look, you have a basic idea on how you can make a mushroom shape. Because it does roll over like that. So, you know, you can make them all over. Put a couple down here. I may put them bigger down here. Why? Because it's closer to me. Mm -hmm. So I would want you to feel like those mushrooms is falling out. Or like, oh my God, darling. You are wrong for that. Yes, I am. But I am happily wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see? So yeah, don't be don't be, you know, feeling some type of way because you got a greedy person that lays inside of you, everybody. Let that greedy person live. My greedy person lives during the artwork and everything, you see. So now I'm making my my shape that looks like a uh, uh, ground chicken or ground, yeah. A, a ground chicken steak. Because when they do the breast like that, it doesn't stay like how beef does in a cube type of steak. Mm -hmm. It balls up. And it looks like little balls. You know, even if they didn't put it through a grinder, the balls won't be as uniform as ground meat. You know what I mean? I go to another place where the way they do their um, uh, chicken hoagies is they take the chicken breasts out and fillet it and everything and do all that good stuff right there on the grill and then chop it up so then now you have chunks of chicken in there. So I like that one too because that one is more like chunks. So I'm going to go with the chunky one. And every now and then you just make one or two a little bit darker. Now think ahead. Do you want tomatoes in yours? I don't know what you want What you want in yours. Nadine says she's just a plain Jane. It's the cheese and meat. That's it. I don't need nothing else. Stay up off my sandwich, basically. Mm -hmm. So with me, I want the cheese, and then sometimes I get a pesto sauce on there, and you know. So up here, up top, I'm gonna make a darker line, and have a little bit of negative space in it, because this goes back to that idea of what I was talking about earlier when we wasn't on uh, recording just yet, Nadine. Like. If you take and you put smaller encapsulated areas, you see, mm -hmm. they start to move and vibrate and it causes like a shimmering type of effect. Makes it feel like something is more exciting than what it is. Yeah, I think you called it vibrations in yes. between the lines. Yep, that's what it is. So all these little small spaces that we make in, the more that we put more things in there, it's going to seem like it's shimmering. And then it gives the eye a frenzy. So all that is is just positive and negative space. Once again, when we say positive and negative now, we mean the white from the paper and the black of the marker. So you're looking at that and it's flipping in your mind. It's, it's vibrating mm -hmm. because it's trying. Your, your brain is trying to fix in on one area and it can't. So it starts to fix in on everything. Pretty much if you use your computer, you'll see your computer do it too as well when it's trying to pick the center area and you'll see all the squares light up every now and then. So it's trying to figure out the best within that area that you pick. Well, your eye is doing that to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know? And these are the things that you can use once you're aware of them. Sometimes we're... The, the fastest way to get to most of this is just understanding line and edge and mark. As soon as you understand that, I mean, that's how I was able to pass tests from K through eight. I'm going to be mm -hmm. honest with you, everybody. Just looking at the picture. So I had a lot of understanding of edges and how shapes are. And I could, you know, I would get the answer out of that photograph. So mm -hmm. just to let you know, this is something that's always been done, not just by me, but a lot of people. You see, and the more you understand edges and how to manipulate them in the various, you know, infinite ideas of surfaces that you can mimic, it's it's endless. You know what I mean? So I don't want you to think that, oh, you have to do it the Don Stevens way. No, no, no. I don't I never really liked it like that. It never sounded good to me coming off that way. It always sounded good to me saying, hey, won't you take this suggestion? It worked for me. Make up your own now, you see? 
Because mm -hmm. not everybody's going to make the same arc, mark. You know, you see that there. Everybody's going to say what? Mushroom, right, Nadine? Mm -hmm. Then you can't say nothing else but mushroom. What else you going to say? Let's think about it. Tree? Well, why would a... Well, a tree... If you said tree, I'd say, oh, do you mean broccoli or cauliflower? Oh, right. Because those are the only other two shapes that would be that way outside of a mushroom. Because the floweret of the broccoli is like that when you get your General Souls chicken. Because they just have the crown and they cut the crown in half or in quarters. Yeah, it's serious business over here with food. I don't play around. With it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't eat. <clears throat> so now look, in between here, we can say where some cheese might be. You see, maybe put a couple of dark areas here and there. You know how they melt the cheese on top every now and then, right? Mm -hmm. And then now I will put more of my fixings trying to maintain to my chicken shape that I made, my chunky chicken shape that I made, and may even dance some of my onions in here now, you know, a couple of squares of mushroom, a couple of squares of uh, chopped onions and bell peppers, you know. But I do ask for extra mushrooms, everybody. I'll let you know that for real, for real, baby. When I get a chicken cheese steak or eggplant parmesan, mm -hmm. yeah, I ask for extra mushrooms, onions, and garlic. See, garlic, you can do the same way, you know, not unless you're one of those that, like the whole clove of roasted garlic. I don't do that out in public too much, but, <laughs> you know. I, I thought you just, love garlic. I do, but, man, I ate roasted garlic like that out somewhere one time, and I was just, ooh. You can smell it coming out my pores, man. Mm -hmm. You knew it was me. Hey, it's that guy over there. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's the one. He's the one that ate a whole bushel of garlic. You know what I mean? What is wrong with him? But no, nah, yeah, that's what happens with me. So I, I already know what not to do when I go out to eat. I, I save those type of dishes when I'm home or, you know, you're, you're out someplace where people appreciate you. And then they know what's going on. Oh, man, they, they know garlic come out your pores that fast, man. But they do. Yeah. Especially if you're a person that don't really, like, I don't really drink. And I don't mm -hmm. drink a lot of juices and stuff no more like how I used to. Mm -hmm. So I'm mainly a lot of water, tea, and coffee. So with somebody like myself, a lot of the, you know, impurities come out from when you're sweating but when I sweat, I don't have too many impurities in there because I'm not eating those, you know, uh, a lot of manufactured foods. Mm -hmm. So when it, so now when you're drinking more water, you're flushing your system. Your 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 outward smells are not going to be as bad. I'm not going to say they're, they're non-existent. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that. I won't go like most vegans to try to say. But what I will say is that you will see if you switch your diet from eating less eating less meat and more vegetables and more water instead of, you know what I mean, uh, uh, sugary and salty and alcohol, mm -hmm. you can notice a change in your bodily fluids. Mm -hmm. And then one change is the, the smell of the bodily fluids, especially your sweat. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So your sweat will start to not have a, a heavy stench to it. And then everybody, you can research on your own to see, you know, why that is so for you, possibly. I don't know. But just look into it. And then somebody asked me here recently, so well, why do you, you know, want to know all this stuff? I said, well, I'm not religious, but doesn't every religious text tell you to get to know thine self? Mm -hmm. So to me, getting to know thine self is not just, you know, simple. I mean, you want to know, you know, my, I want to know my biorhythms. I want to know, you know, what's the maximum time for me to be who I am? You know what I mean? Yeah. And with that being said, getting to know thyself is not just, you know, some limited idea. 
of surface idea. I want to know, you know, what time of the day is my brain the best active? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What foods make my body react and move better? You know, that's what I believe knowing thine self is, you know? And then now everybody, we just replicating with the bigger marker. See, now when I come back with that smaller micro marker, let's show you a little bit of that movement. Let me get that. And I use the 0 0.08. Anything like 0 0.05 and all of that good stuff, anything smaller than that? Oh, man. It's going to be hard to see it, everybody, okay? And you have to do more marks with this. So what I would do is I come in here, and then now you start doing little intricates of the meat. And I'm working with the idea of where the shadow will be. It's very important, once again, bringing up what we talked about earlier on, Nadine, that positive and negative space that you made mention to. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you understand the shadow area, which is going to be perceived as the positive. Mm -hmm. You see? Because the darks you can see faster so than where will the darks and lights be? I'm saying the light is coming from the right side, everybody, and cascading to the left. So that means that all my shadows are going to be on the left side and bottom, see? So when you come in with this marker, the micro marker, you can make little minute movements on the surface. Or what you're saying is the surface and start turning it round so that bun can really feel like a crunchy bun in somebody's hand. So I'll give it away too as well, everybody. When I worked in the supermarkets, I used to be the guy that would do the drawing for your produce aisles and meat and fish and poultry aisles. Mm -hmm. So you would see a sandwich like this in an Acme or a shop right. Because I got to the point where I can do it independently. So I started going around because, you know, other people started going to different supermarkets. And then I found out that that's not, you know, a position based thing. That's, you know, that, that can be a contract. Mm -hmm. So one of my first contracts was going around for this one company and doing the produce drawings on the, on the little uh, boards and things like that, paintings of them. And that's where I got a lot of these ideas from, everybody, because I started to switch it up. Because there started to be guys that was coming along that really, you know, could do the same work. So I was like, okay, how do I set myself apart? I started doing these graphic drawings, as they would call them. These marker drawings. Because it's like doing an editorial for, for a magazine or a newspaper, everybody. Mm -hmm. Now notice, I'm using memory. How am I going to make something seem rounder than what it is? I got to use a curved mark of some sort or a couple of curved marks to make you believe that something's going, coming up and then going down. See that, Nadine? See that curve motion that I'm doing? Yeah. You see, and you want to you wanna be able to do that. See, a lot of this I learned from being in the, the art high school. This is one of the things that they work on with you, controlling a graphic image, you know, understanding black, white, and gray. And how, could, how can you manipulate that? What truly is positive and negative space? You know, these are some of the things. And if you notice what I'm doing, I'm establishing what the surface movement is. You see that? Mm -hmm. So think about the minutes of your sandwich, everybody. Because I know when I get this open face sandwich, even if I get it from Wawa, and I ask them to open face, that cheese and everything is sliding down and down. You see? So I got to do motions diagonally and downward and then curve them at the top. Now, I leave a little bit of that space a little lighter or untouched. Why? Because the cheese is white. It's mozzarella. Or it's yellow, you know, cheddar. The butter is golden. See, these are all the things that you get in with color. But after I do the sigil work, the marker work, it'll turn on those glands in your body. Mm-hmm. 
you know? And a lot of times that's where I get a lot of my um, uh, applause and, and pats and accolades from people because they'll say things like, man, I really, you know what I mean? I, even though I looked at everybody else's artwork, somebody will say, I wanted to really eat your sandwich. <laughs> and to me, that's like bigger than winning the show. Yeah, because you've done it. You've done it. Yeah, I've done my job and I made yeah. the human being react. So that means if I've done it once, I can do it again mm -hmm. and again and again. And the more that I do it, the more effective and the more efficient I'm going to become. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hope for everybody that's joining our group is that your confidence, not that you become this arrogant person, no, but your confidence to want to create whatever you want to create is going to be high. It won't be a thing of where you would question yourself to death to where you question yourself right out of having a creative uh, uh, moment or journey. So that's the other real mission of it, to get everybody's confidence to a point where they're going to create every day almost. If you can get to where I'm at, to where I create every day and at least a good 16 to maybe almost 20 hours on a day, then yeah, that's where I want you at. You know, that's fun. And I can have other people to talk to on that level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You know, there's lots you can talk about when you work to that level. But not everybody wants to work to that level, which is understandable. You know? Ah, oh, darn it. See, I put mine too close to the edge on the right side, everybody. You see that? Mm. Well, you know, it's okay. I know for the next one, I'll move it over again. If I was to do another one of these sandwich uh, uh, pieces, mm -hmm. then I would move it over a little bit, probably put it more center and then put the smaller up top. And around. Yeah, what about a sausage sandwich? You see what I'm Ooh. saying? Ooh, my God. I remember a kielbasa? Saying. Oh, my God. Ooh, split that thing open. Oh, my God. Well, how about, oh, how about this one, Nadine? You ever have a pastrami sandwich, an egg and pastrami sandwich? I'm not really, I'm not really crazy about pastrami. Oh, man, turkey pastrami used to be my bomb, man. You get that open face with a, 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 as an omelet on a whole. That was a breakfast sandwich that me and my mom used to get. Oh, my God. And I used to get it from this place where my Aunt Annie used to live. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Oh, I forget that. It's Hill Street. I, for, I forget the name of the section of Brooklyn we was in. Ooh, I know they're going to curse me out for that. Mm -hmm. But it used to be this restaurant right on the corner where she lived on Hill Street. And me and my mom, before we would go up, <laughs> we would like, before we would leave the house, though, we would call that restaurant and then we would call my Aunt Annie. Mm -hmm. And we would be like, we're on our way. You, you, you know where we're going. And she mm -hmm. said, yeah, I know you. You want one or what? Anybody, anybody want one? So then my mom would, you know, buy a couple of sandwiches or they would meet us down there and we all would eat at the restaurant. Pastrami and egg hobies, breakfast hobies. And they would get the steak and I would get the pastrami. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Best hobies. Best sub, best sam, breakfast sandwiches you can get. Man. If you want a nice one, if they know how to make it. An open face, pastrami, an egg omelet hobie. Oh. It's a breakfast sandwich. You won't forget it. I know it sounds like a lot. <laughs> but you'll at least get two days out of that one, too. Like, all mm -hmm. the sandwiches I used to get, my mom used to plan ahead because, you know, I couldn't eat it all at one sitting at, 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 at that time. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, when I got to those teen years, I was able to eat that whole sandwich. And one sitting. So I, a, after a while, I hadn't been told you ain't going to get nothing else. All right, let me, can you cut mine in half, sir? You know what I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then that's where you would get the extra fixings, like extra onions, sometimes uh, home fries or fried potatoes, you know, mm -hmm. the, the breakfast potatoes that everybody gets, you know what I mean? They call them home fries or home style fried potatoes. Onions in those too, and if you want them crunchy or not, you know. And I used to like mine as crunchy. Everything had to be crunchy. And hot too, Nadine. Gotta put them hot peppers on it. Man. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, man. Come on, man. The hotter the better, especially in the wintertime. Oh my God. 
Does it doesn't have to be Tabasco and all that, just the hot peppers, like real fresh hot peppers. Cut them jalapenos up or whichever ones you got. Dice them up and put that in the sandwich. Boy. <laughs> if you walk around with your shirt off outside, 30 degree weather. Right. <laughs> put you up, everybody. These are some of the conversations that are cool going along with you making up what type of sandwich. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what type of sandwich other people are going to make, you know. Maybe mm -hmm. a ham and cheese, you know, you're going to make that. Would you make that open face like how we got it? You know, how how is your sandwich looking, everybody? You know, you see the idea. Come back with the smaller marker and really agitate your surfaces, everybody. Now, notice how I reversed the idea of working from the background from working from underneath to working on top. You see what mm -hmm. we're doing, Aideen? Mm -hmm. So now I'm getting my bun together on the sides here, you see? And I use the micro marker for that. Now, the reason why we're using the micro marker and not dried out markers is because I don't want to tone like how we had in the mountain scene that we did. Mm -hmm. You see, in the mountain scene that we did, we wanted that grayish effect for tonality. Now we want the pure line effect for the surface movement, you see? Maybe put a couple little uh, oblong little circles here and there for the sesame seeds that I want on mine. You see, Nadine, so you said no sesame seeds on yours, so, but I want them on mine. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just something about sesame seeds on it and the butter with the garlic. Because I like my bun open face toasted with the garlic on it, man. Put that garlic on the grill and lay that bun right on top of all that garlic, man. I remember the guy said, oh, you must be Greek or Italian or something. I said, no, nah, man. I'm a good old African-American, as we call it now. Mm -hmm. But I just love that garlic and butter, man. I, I can't get enough of it. You know what I'm saying? So, right. And that's how you know I was a spoiled fat kid. The difference between a spoiled fat kid and a spoiled kid is that the spoiled fat kid gets whatever he wants to eat or she wants to eat. <laughs> the spoiled kid just gets the things that they want. Mm. I was the spoiled fat kid. I wasn't worried about things. I was worried about food, mm. juices, snacks. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. What we having for breakfast? We got oatmeal? We got an oatmeal, mom? You know? God, dog, boy. I'm surprised I'm not 500 pounds, y'all, everybody. <laughs> but I always ate good meals, whole meals, everybody. You always had vegetables and things like that with it. So that's why your boy Don, you know, just added on to what it is that I already knew to have the, di the dinner package that I use now. So, yeah, you know. Last night was just avocados, mushrooms, and... um. A chicken breast. Okay. Yeah. And you lay all, layer all those together, you know, and I put it back in the oven with some cheese. This time I did the, um, what's that? The, uh, uh, the hot cheese, the pepper jack cheese. Mm. Yeah. And you put that over the top. Boom. I tried the vegan cheese, everybody. I'm really not liking this pecan cheese. It's it's creamy when it melts, but it doesn't give you a cheesy effect. And uh, that's what I got to get over. The cheesy, the cheesy effect that you miss from having cheese. That's why you want cheese. You want it to stretch. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I, I appreciate the creaminess of the pistachio cheese, but it doesn't have that spring that real cheese has. So... That pistachio cheese is really good on, like, um, I've used it in macaroni and cheese. And it creams up real good. But I still wind up using some cheddar in there, so, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I try to tell people, I'm like, nah, man, all right, I, I, I'm I, trying to do the vegetable thing, everybody, totally, but I don't think I'm going to bite for the vegan thing too good. You know, I'm going to have to have somebody around me that really does that on a regular basis because me i will go get a piece of chicken quick <laughs> mm -hmm. i ain't gonna lie i ain't gonna lie i'll stop at popeyes a halal spot i'll get some falafel yeah but nine times out of ten if i'm real hungry 
And uh, I don't see no vegan thing or nothing around. I'm getting anything chicken or turkey. Mm -hmm. It's going down. So remember I had a, a a girlfriend that was a true vegan. She's like, you did it again. I said, did what? You ate turkey. You ate meat. I could smell yeah. it on you. I was like, oh, oh wow. Man. I was like, come on now. I had to eat something. No, you didn't. You could have waited. Nah, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop and wait for some hummus. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna travel two hours to get home, and the only thing I got is hummus. Yeah, you need nah, some man. <laughs> heavy protein or something. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't come from that era, man. I don't know what she was talking about. I said, man, I almost ate a piece of pork on that girl, man. She made me so mad. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I know she meant well, but it was like you travel someplace. I'm not trying to get all the way home, so I was trying to tap off a little bit before I got home. Right. I got home. She was like, hey, I can smell that on you. You ain't snuck nothing. I said, smell what? I smell it. Turkey. Here, come here. And you know, the person gets close on your cheek and they can smell it there. Yeah. And they show you how they can smell it on your underarms and all of that. I'm like, so what? Big deal. It's just <laughs> turkey. You know, I'm not going to kill you if I ate turkey. You know what I mean? I'll be able to defecate it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, now you know that girlfriend's not around no more. Good friend now, but not around mm -hmm. no more. Because <laughs> I'm not strict like that. I'm like, no, nah, man. Nah. Worst come to worst, I will pluck a bird out of the sky. You know what I mean? And say, <laughs> okay, this is what it is tonight, everybody. You know, yeah, I'm sorry. We can't eat this other stuff. I'm sorry, but uh, we're going to eat this bird tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So if you see everybody, some of the smaller strokes that I'm doing with the micro is starting to make you believe the role of the bun. So mm -hmm. what you can see is, is that what we made those lines on the outside real sketchy and real like dash lines, you see. And mm -hmm. now we come back and start to fill in those spaces. It's the same thing when we talk about doing a drawing of a human being or of a building. You place the basic shape down. And then after you feel comfortable or you feel confident with the placement, which is the composition, now you can start worrying about the surface of things, you see? See the surface quality that I'm using for the bread here? Mm -hmm. You see, these are just open, once again, it's those open spaces. So it's the controlling of the contrast between positive and negative space. And if you think about the way the bread does, when it's cut or, you know, that Italian bread or holy bread it does, you can even put a couple little circles in there because you would see holes inside the bread, the fibers of the bread. The more and more you do these type of things, the more and more you're going to fool your viewer to believe that that's really bread. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to make the bread like a sculpting. I just want you to believe with certain marks that it's one dimensional and that you can almost, I want somebody to actually almost walk up and want to, or somebody walk up and go, I can, I can smell that toasted bread. I want, I want the person to feel like that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like with Titian. Titian, I read up on Titian, you guys, and Titian said that he didn't feel comfortable if the flesh on his figures didn't seem like it can come off the page. It had to see off the canvas. It had to seem that fleshy. So I took that idea, too, and I said, well, I want my services since I'm a greedy fat guy. I really mm -hmm. want my stuff to really look like you can almost take that chicken or whatever it is right off the surface. Mm -hmm. You see, so I never got offended if somebody called me greedy or the fat guy because it, it benefited me in art school. Mm -hmm. You know, so that type of observation, I never felt guilty for it. I would literally, now I can control it, but I used to get, I used to fall into trances looking at food. And I would really, <laughs> yeah, I would salivate because I'm so deep in my thought. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I'm looking at the food and I'm like, oh my God, Jesus, look at that. And I'm looking at it in a pan. I can give you a long soliloquy and make you, I can make you real hungry over beef liver being cooked. Mm. It's just the way it caramelizes. I mean, just think about the foods that you like and how they break down when you're watching somebody cook your food mm. or you're cooking it yourself. You know, you may appreciate the food a little bit more. Honestly, I, I know I do. I know I do. Because at this point, when I get the sandwich, I'm uh, uh, putting cayenne pepper and stuff and sea salt on it, too, as well. 
And then I'm ready to, I'm, I'm squeezing this part like this to get it ready. And I got the back end like that. You know, that squeeze like that, maybe mm-hmm. you're trying to break down the crunchiness of oh, the yeah. toast mm-hmm. to get it ready. And then you, you know, you may bite it and then it may start falling in the back. So you got to adjust your hand movement a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You may rip it off on the, you may lay it down on the table. You know what I mean? <laughs> rip off that piece that you bit and be like, mm, oh, mm. everybody does it from small to big. Male to female and everything in between, we all do it. <laughs> you will personalize that sandwich in your hand and dare another soul to even look at it. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, that's why with my dog, I let him act crazy when I had him around his bowl because I felt that feeling like I don't want you to touch the food after you put it there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't need you to try to control me. Just put the food there. Is that mine? Yes. Okay. I give Leave you me alone. Away. Yeah. Let me get, let me handle it. Let me handle that. You know what I mean? You don't need to be trying to do like the dog whisperer. You should be able to put your, I disagree with that. I should not, I should not be able to put my hand in your bowl of food while you're eating. No, mm-hmm. no, that's no, no. You got to have some me time. You only got two me times when you're a dog, when you're eating and when you're pooping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those yeah. are the only two me times. They don't shower, you know what I mean? So you can mix that into everything else when they're licking it themselves down. Mm-hmm. But the only two, you know, alone times they have is when they're defecating and when they're eating. Mm-hmm. So let them have it, everybody. I know. Look, think about it this way. Would you want Richard to put his hand, his paw in your bowl, Nadine, and say, ah, she's going to bite me? Yo. <laughs> Heck no. You'd be like, Richard, I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't know what's happening in the atmosphere. Why are you able to do this act the way it is? But you're about to die if you don't get this paw away from my sandwich. <laughs> you know, you will get beat to oblivion messing around with that sandwich, Richard. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all I want to, you know, you blend all of this into the story so you can have these moments because you might have had the moment too yourself. Think about it. You get you got your favorite sandwich. You at work and then somebody start looking at you funny. Mm. You like, what you looking at? And oh man, you need to go on over there. I asked everybody before I left. Does anybody need anything? Order it now because I'll be coming back. You know. Yeah. I used to hate that when I had a gig, man. Somebody, it's always somebody that'll wait until you get back and be like, dang, I forgot to let you know I was no, I know you didn't. You want to get some of my sandwich now. That's mm-hmm. all that is trickster you know what i mean (laughs) so yeah man look at this man see now on this right side i can make it look like the the meat is falling out so i'll make a section where the meat look like it's falling out right here out the sandwich here and this is the bread over here so then now i would start setting up to do some of those marks that i did on the left side on the bun you see everybody and I'm just, you know, Nadine, I'm just using these uh, quick hash marks. Some of them are long, some of them are short. But you see, I'm using the micro marker. Mm-hmm. And you can see from using this micro marker that that idea that I said earlier about the, the shimmering of the enclosed smaller spaces. Can you see that idea? Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's what's going on. And that's what we call also agitating the surface with smaller marks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So smaller markers, smaller marks, you get more detail on the surface. Notice I didn't use the king size one. Mm, Yeah. Yeah, I really didn't want those dark marks just yet. With the king size one, I would come back towards the end and then say where some true darks are in between the meats. You know, and it's some of the dressing and the fi- and the fillings. You see, when I get down into this area where I'm trying to say, okay, the cheese is in the middle here. You see coming from here. Now this is where I start focusing in on the direction of things. And then all this is meat and mushrooms and stuff on the side with some mushrooms and the cheese, you see? So by the time I get down here with all those marks, now I come back with the regular marker to do my meat. You see? Mm-hmm. And now that I settled in on a certain movement for my meat now, it's like little almost noodles looking like. You see, the sauce looking like ground meat in there. 
And that's what you want to do. Every now and then, drop a square in there if you want to for the onions. You see, you can do the Julian onions or you can do the diced onions. I did the diced onions for this one. A lot of times when I get a hoagie, I get sauteed vegetables put on a turkey sandwich. So then that's when I want the Julian onions, the longer onions then. You see, so different styles of sandwiches would yield different marks, everybody. You see, let them overlap. It's mark invention now. You got to make up a mark that's going to resemble the meat that's in your particular sandwich, everybody. Pixins included, you know. Imagine if somebody had to look at your drawing to say what type of sandwich they wanted. Mm. Yeah, you see? That's how I think about it, too. What if somebody had to use my drawing to be able to say they wanted a particular sandwich? You know, and could my drawing be that? Or can I make a drawing where somebody can look at it and say, I want that sandwich right there, number five? And then the chef and that person both look and they go, yes, that's number five right there. Mushrooms, onions, mozzarella cheese, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Extra oil, no lettuce. You know, every now and then I may get the um those cherry tomatoes cut in half mm -hmm. or plum tomatoes cut up. But other than that, I'm the same way, except for the only difference between my sandwich and yours, Nadine, I'm going for the straight toast, the open face toast. Okay. And then the double toast, whereas now when they put the fixings on it, they put one more layer of cheese on that thing and then you put it back in the oven for like five minutes. And then now you have this cheesy, melting, crunchy abyss of goodness. Goodness. Yeah. See, I'm almost there. My stomach is growling already. I don't know uh, about Yeah, all, man. I'm hungry. My stomach, you man, listen, if I finish this sandwich, I'm not going to be able to see me. I'm going to be like, all right, Nadine, take it easy. Bye. You know? Bye. <laughs> Time to go. Time to go, Nadine. You know what I mean? It's, it, you know, it's one or two pizza paws that I deal with that make sandwiches like this, man, out here in uh, Kensington. So the nice thing about it now is everybody, you can put in, you know, the area that you're going to go to. And then uh, uh, you can get a listing pretty much of all the eateries around your area, depending upon how you ask Google Maps. Yeah. So the information age is proving to be a pretty fun age to be in as far as finding things to do and, you know, the way things are organized and uh, managed together as far as, you know, activities and uh, social placement of things and items. So I've been to more restaurants than ever than when I had a, uh, didn't have GPS or Google Maps. Mm -hmm. I got Google Maps now. You get on that thing, you, you know, four houses around one, one, nine, you know, put the zip code in and ask for four houses, you know, ramen noodles around. <laughs> right. And the computer lets you know, you know, especially Alexa. People that have Alexa know what I'm talking about. Say, hey, Alexa, where's the closest restaurant that serves up vegetable dumplings around you? Mm -hmm. And she'll tell you, the restaurant on so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so street has vegetable dumplings and a whole menu. Mm, yeah. Here, try their website out. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, click the website below. There you go. You know it. But that's how I find a lot of restaurants and stuff now, everybody. Or I just go exploring. I'll take a section and ride my bike in that section and see what fooleries are in that area. Because mm -hmm. even though you know there's some main ones out there, man, there's some hidden jewels that you you're, you know, certain corner stores that have certain things, man. And you'd be like, what? You got this one where? The little poppy store in the corner of pool? Oh, no, nah, I got to go back over there. It's got to make sure it's official. You know, or the small little uh, uh, pizzerias and stuff like this that are in certain areas that are hidden jewels. 
He's like, where'd you get that sandwich from? The poppy store right over the corner. What? Another one is Jamaican food, the jerk spots and stuff in the uh, Indian spots now. Oh, yeah, that's looking like real good cheese and meat in there. What you think, Nadine? Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Let me put some more in there. What time we got, Nadine? I started stargazing too much. It's 12.05. Oh, man. Dang, everybody. Well, we're almost pretty much done, everybody. Look at that. But you know what I mean? What does your sandwich look like, everybody? That's my sandwich. I'm not done with it yet. I might go out and go get me a sandwich now. I'm feeling that. Yeah, I think now. I'm ready for a sandwich, too. Yeah, man. Mushrooms and everything, man. I got this honey, this honey, this spicy honey that I got that I might dribble over. It's got hot peppers and garlic Ooh. and ginger in it. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Good honey and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Uh, I had some peaches, so I'm going to get the peaches for right now. Oh, man. I see yours, Nadine. You put yours up on the screen yet? Okay. Or, you know what I mean? You're like, no, no, I'm out of here, man. All right, there you go. There you are. Okay, I, I don't see it on the computer anymore. All right, let me expand the computer one so I can see it. Because all I see is my version. Bye, y'all. Okay. Bye, I see you now. Yeah. I got to make this side darker, right? Well, not just darker. This is where you show us the form of the bun. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Now this is where you would take some of these smaller movements mm -hmm. with the smaller Sharpie and do these curved motions, like how the bun would be. You're doing sketchy marks that would curve up and then down towards the inside of the bun. They have to curve those to make us see, see the roundness of the bun. Mm -hmm. So it's like a quasi C motion that you're doing. Each dash is moving along the C. It's not that each one is a C because it'll make it look furry then. Mm -hmm. What I mean is that when you're going around the surface, each mark that you put down has to be a curved mark diagonally to follow up what that crease is doing on the bun. See, this is how I know a lot of people don't really look at their food. Really, really think about what the bun is doing around the edges when it's curving. It's a round bun. It's not square. It's not furry. Mm -hmm. You see? So then each mark has to go like it's on a skin almost. If you look at mine's on the surface there, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Maybe you'll be able to see it if I zoom in a little bit more. Can you see those little scratch marks there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the micro markers. And you see how the curves are moving? Mm -hmm. Even in the description of the of the ruggedness of the bread in the front. Mm -hmm. See how they half C and, and, and half curved and going with the surface or what is okay. the perceived surface? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not just doing a, a C mark like, I, like I'm trying to show uh, curly hair or something. That's that 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 half a curved dash mark is showing you the surface of the bun mm -hmm. and how the surface is moving. You know, because if you notice, I turned it when I get down to the bottom here it was more in the front. I turned it upside down to make it like U marks. So then this way it looks more porous mm. on that part of the bread. You see? Mm hmm. Notice how I didn't put the darknesses too dark in the middle of the bun. It's more so at the bottom or at the top of the bun, meaning the top of the page is most of the darknesses is there. And if you come to the bottom of the bun that's most forward, most of the darknesses are there. Mm -hmm. 
that's what you feel like if you're really looking at a bun or something when you're looking at it that's like the position that you're really seeing it in and you see the roundness of the bun in your eye as it gets closer your eyes is only able to see limited you may even see your own nose in your bite mm. but nonetheless you're seeing that curvature the roundness of the bun yeah, those curves got to be there or else it seems flat. Then it's not a, you know, it's a flatbread sandwich. It's a Panera's then. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, a cheesesteak hoagie. You know, nothing should look flat. It should all look round, buoyant, fluffy. Yeah, that's why I had to stop on mine. The mushrooms were starting to look good. I was starting to get yeah. into the, the mushrooms being in the cheese and Ooh, I was about to get dirty, dirty in there, boy. Yeah, my stomach already started talking. Yeah, man. And I had the double cheese. I got the, the butter on the inside and the, the cheese, the double cheese working already on the bun. Mm. You can see all of that on mine, man. I'm ready to rock. Yeah. All right. It's 1210. Yep. <laughs> Woo! All right. Yeah, I'll be yeah. back out on the street today. Okay. Yeah, young man supposed to meet me on the street. Let's see if he come. Nice. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to uh, do some drawing on the street, so I'll so, take him outside and do so some now, drawing with him. Right. So this is a private session you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so you two hours. Two hours. Yeah. And um, and it's any. How how old is he? Oh, this young man is in his mid twenties. Oh, okay. So it doesn't young... matter the age group, mm -hmm. it's whomever wants it, you know what I mean? And if you're able to do the hourly fee, which is, you know, twenty five, you know, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it's two, you know, fifty dollars for a one one session. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And you can pay that or uh I don't use the cash app for that. I I prefer using the PayPal for that. Right. Yeah, and then boom, you meet me either at the studio and we drive over to a location mm -hmm. or you meet me at a location. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this young man, I'm just taking him up the block. There's a little park up the block on um on Allegheny. Mm -hmm. uh, right before you get to the 95 and uh, I have him do some drawings of, you know, the park. Mm -hmm. It's not a traditional park. It's like one of those little parks that people walk through and they have a couple of seats there and all that good stuff. Nice. Yeah, it's that type of thing there. Yeah. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a really nice experience to have, you know. Yeah, ballpoint pen, markers, and uh any type of watercolor set you want to use. It can be acrylic too, but I've had more people do the pen and the 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 pen sharpie and watercolor thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's a little bit more fast and expedient and then i had a couple of people do the uh watercolor pencil thing with me mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter the material it's just that do you have the material gotcha yeah if you don't have it then i always suggest to the people uh ballpoint pen pencil sharpie and mm -hmm. then there we can go watercolor sets because you can buy a cheap watercolor set anywhere Mm. And to make it happen, to understand and to learn landscape uh, drawing and right. painting. And that's what we focus on out there. So I have him drawing the uh, colorful leaves that are breaking down mm -hmm. and changing color now. And the um, the beautiful scenic, you know how the leaves look around chairs and you have those yeah. beautiful moments and things. So I figure, you know, we'll get out there right around, you know, this time, around about one o'clock, two mm -hmm. o'clock. And then that's when you start seeing dramatic lighting after 12 o'clock. Yeah, that's yeah. a nice time. Nice yeah, time it's if it's not, you know, especially this time of year. Yeah. In the summertime, things can get washed out. Yeah, that's when you got to go out early morning and you mm -hmm. go later in the afternoon, a, a dusk type of idea mm -hmm. where that sunlight is coming in almost parallel from the west. Mm. So those are good times to to take good shots of places and things like that, everybody. So, like I said, like this morning when I got started, you know, you saw the way the shadows were and I took pictures of those. Mm -hmm. And then it would be the same thing in the afternoon, except for the shadows would probably shift and be going the opposite direction. 
So be an advocate of timing, everybody. Start looking around you and noticing what beautiful things are around you. Because it may make an ugly thing that's ugly to you or non-attractive. Yeah. Just the lighting and the atmosphere alone may make it attractive to you. Right. Yeah. You never know. And so sometimes, please. sometimes it's going back to the same location at Good. different times in the day. Exactly. Mundo. Yeah. 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 Well, all right, everybody, Art Fam, thank you for being a part of this wonderful group. Uh, Let's Paint and Draw Along. My name is Nadine O. And Don Stevens has has taken us on another journey that has made me very hungry. Are you (laughs) hungry as well? (laughs) Put that in the comment section. Did this session today make you hungry? And if so, take a picture. If you ended up buying a cheese steak or chicken steak or hoagie or whatever, um, Mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. Take that time and observe how that bun is, how it's Mm -hmm. shaped and the cheese, how it's rolling off of the bun and the other things that you put in there. Really take that time and look at it. I know I am the next time I get one. So we want to thank you. We're going to come to a close. We'll hope to see you again next Sunday. Enjoy this wonderful time of year where the colors and the leaves. Yes, yes. yes. You know, look at how the leaves are, the trees that have still a little bit of the leaves still hanging on for dear life and the others that are on the ground. Just take a look, observe. Uh, Take a couple pictures with your cell phone. It might be something that you um, decide to tackle with a Sharpie marker. So thanks, everyone. And as always, we just want to tell you to keep Keep creating. creating. Keep creating, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Take it easy. Catch you again real soon.